Yeah. I think I think it's time to see what's in your vessel. Okay. And how this evaporator is built into the cabinets, and then how we've done our large uh, externally mounted salon evaporator. Well, let's go see how you pimp my ride. All right. <laughs> We're going up on the Genie Green Electric right now, and uh, and basically it's uh, this salon. We've uh, we basically now if we stand up, we're standing on the cockpit, and I hear nothing. And the air conditioner run, been running consistently for the last four days. Yeah. Everybody that opens that door feels the cooling of it, and uh, we're going to go inside. It's it's a little chilly in there, so I'll leave my coat out here. But you know, if you had the proper curtains all the way around, it would be darn chilly. <laughs> it's already colder than it needs to be. Come on in. Okay. And so we made this 144 volt DC, and underneath the salon, we have uh, uh, we put in two banks of, of 12 brute force batteries from Royal Battery and Energy in uh, in Florida, and they're AGMs, they're Group 31s, they're the ones that you just saw it on the dock, and these battery packs are, are series together to create 144 volt. Jay, why don't I just pull up this cushion here so people can see? Uh, the installation? The installation of those batteries. Now we've left a nice plexiglass cover here so you can see how the batteries are installed all the way around the salon seating. So we've taken a bunch of weight from your diesel engines on the back of the boat and centered it more or less on this vessel. So you end up getting a better ride and a better sail out of it. You also see in here you have your uh, 144 volt down to 12 volt. Cross charger, okay. cross charger. And that, that's important to have because all our fans on the evaporators are running off of 12 volt DC. Say 144 volt power out to all the evaporators. It's only going to the main compressor condenser unit. So running that wiring is very, very easy and then running the 12 volt wiring is even easier. So that's, that's how you set the batteries up. Let's take a look at the evaporator over here in the corner. This is our large salon evaporator. And it's, uh, it's been lovingly upholstered by me with the same material you, you redid your cushions in. And that's something anybody can do with these units on their own boats. You can customize that to, to match however you want. It could have been done in vinyl. This was done in, in uh, cloth. But you, you can do that in all sorts of ways. You could paint it. It's an all aluminum box for corrosion resistance. But you can... You can pretty it up any way you want. This is the same one that people are using now in Provost buses, yeah, in in other types of things, in trucks and stuff like that. This is a two. Now I got to tell you guys, this is a this is a big salon area, and I'm sitting over. I'm a good solid five, almost uh, eight feet away. Good solid eight feet 10, away. Yeah, and I can feel, feet. I can feel the airflow clear over here, and it is not. It's cool. In fact, it's even, in my opinion, it's even a little chilly. Oh my goodness. Yes. So that's, that's the, uh, the evaporator we typically use in large open areas like this. Uh, and as you see, you can, you can do a real nice job of making it blend into its surroundings. It's very effective with the free blow evaporators. You're not trying to push air through ducts. It's, uh, it's not uncomfortably loud with the fan noise. Uh, you can talk, you can sit in here comfortably. The nice thing is you can direct the air with these vents wherever you want it to go. So even someone sitting right here can direct the air around either side of them so they're not getting, you know, overly cold. And tell me about these controls. Uh, you chose intentionally analog over any type of digital environment because each unit is independent. So yes. if you're sitting up in the salon and the only thing I want to run is the salon area, then everything else is shut off because it's unnecessary. Exactly. And we've kept the controls, we've actually kept the whole system, electrical system, very, very simple. We use mechanical controls, mechanical relays. Uh, in fact, on this boat, because it doesn't need a low voltage disconnect switch, there are no electronic components to our AC system. Everything is electrical, meaning Anybody with a with a uh, automotive wiring test light to troubleshoot the electrical system on this on this unit. Um, the controls are simple. You have a, a rotary thermostat for adjusting how cold you want it, the air to be coming out of here, and you have a three-speed blower switch. If you want to turn the unit off, you turn the blower switch off. 
it stops. If you wanted to use this just as a fan without the AC running, you turn the thermostat right down and the compressor won't come on and you can just use this simply as a fan for moving air around in, in a little cooler temperatures or if you're in real cold temperatures and you're using some, some electric heat for instance, you can help move air around the boat using just these fans. You're redirecting all your cooling capacity to exactly where you want it. So you can keep those cabins adjusted to the temperature you want them at and then the main compressor will cycle off more often, thereby saving your energy and stretching your battery power farther and farther and farther. Now except for the jet that's flying over us right now, I, as soon as we as soon as we as soon as the jet goes over, I'm gonna ask you to turn the power off on this one, okay, so that they can hear exactly what the compressor sounds like. Because we've got another unit running in a, in another cabin. Yeah. So if you turn that power off. And that, that compressor unit is actually mounted uh, behind the bulkhead right behind where you are now. So okay, let's turn so this let's, one off. Okay. So now we have we have down 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 in the lower cabins you can kind of hear the fan going a little bit. Okay, and the compressor will kick on and off, but you can see that right now, if you look at it, this right here is the compressor. And most people that look for footprint and space uh, and, and, and what they've had in the past, maybe you've had an air conditioner in the past, uh, maybe a 12,000 BTU, this actually had a, a smaller footprint than my 12,000 BTU other brand of uh, uh, air pushing thing. And that noise, you just heard the compressor kick on. I'll be quiet. Uh, now you may need to turn up your volume on YouTube for this to hear it, but uh, I gotta tell you, I could sleep all night long because I'm not hearing a genset whine. I'm not hearing every time a compressor kicks on with an AC genset, what happens is it draws down the power and makes the engine roar a little bit every yeah. time you do it. With and this one, it's very consistent. And the noise we're hearing right now is going to be lessened. Uh, now, we have this uh, hole through the wall with a piece of plexiglass. That's the only thing blocking any of the sound coming through that wall from there. So, in a, in a, a non-display application, you can put in a little soundproofing and basically eliminate any noise from that compressor condensing unit whatsoever. And this is a this is a water cooled, water -cooled. so I'm doing just like my other air conditioners in the past. Yeah. It's drawing water out of one of your um, uh, one of your through hulls. It's bringing it through, cooling uh, down the uh, condenser. Uh, how, I'm not sure exactly yeah, how that works. Cooling down the condenser, condenser cooling and, the refrigerant, and then over and then, and and then over the over. side with it. Yeah, and so it's, it's basically hotter water going over the side, taking the heat out of the boat. Yeah, we used our existing uh, uh, exit port. Yeah. Uh, but we put in a new through hull that was up uh, in the head in the front of the boat because it has a little bit of a pump noise. Yeah. And we wanted to keep that away from anybody so that would be sleeping. We located the pump under the under the floorboards in in the bilge area. Yeah. Uh, of the of the head, so it's somewhere where no one's going to be sleeping. Hopefully, <laughs> unless there's been a heck of a party, uh, um, and, and so they that, won't feel it anyway. Yeah, and that little bit of pump noise isn't going to bother anybody up there. It doesn't have any vibration that transmits through the hall either, so it's very nice that way. Well, let's go. Let's go down and look at the uh, look at the location of the other ones. What we did there, and you can probably open up that access door and kind of show them the backside of what you did there. Yeah, let's let's look at the ugly part first. If you open up the access door, we have a, a mid cabin and a, and a aft cabin. Aft cabin, and we've mounted two evaporators built into this cabinet. One pointing up, one pointing down, essentially. And they're just one set of lines running to these two evaporators and they were teed together. Uh, very effective. This is a solenoid valve. So then when the refrigerant, or when this evaporator is cold enough, this closes and it would redirect the refrigerant to a different evaporator that was still calling for it, making it as efficient as possible. And it also gives us a very simple, very effective zone control. So if we walk in here, we'll see really what you see as a person sleeping in the cabin. Now this thing's cranked up right on high and we've, we've built it. So it's a flush mounted unit. It's built right into the wall. Uh, we upholstered this with some old gray vinyl we had kicking around. But if we'd done it in the, the white that's the, everywhere else in the cabin, this would pretty much disappear. 
So it gives you, you can, you can do a very neat, very tidy, very professional looking install. And it, it's, it's too cold in this cabin. You'd want to turn the thermostat down and your blower speed down to low, especially at night. We're in the sunshine today. It's going to be about 80, 90 degrees here in Miami. Uh, and, and it's still freezing in here. If, if we had a butcher, they'd be hanging meat right now. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It is cold. Okay, so and we have a midship berth here. Yeah. And this berth, is it has its own. I'll, I'll kind of sneak in here again. And this has its own. It's the other one we put in here. And you can see we have the uh, uh, air intake so for circulation. So you have plenty of uh, flow yeah. of warm air in and, and cold air out. Yeah, you need to get the, the air you're trying to cool to the back side of the evaporator. So okay. it can be drawn through the co cooling coil, have the heat removed from it, and then be blown into the cabin. And if we're up at the pillows up there, we could direct the air directly up there and we could literally turn it up to high speed and we'd be, uh, we'd be moving the hair on a person's head. Oh yeah. Oh, eight yeah. feet up there. This is awesome. Any, any difficulty so, whatsoever. so I have, I have no, uh, I have no AC generator on this boat. Right. Okay. We were, we were in the Gulf Stream coming up here, yes. coming up from Marathon. We went up through the Gulf Stream to get to Miami, and we turned the air conditioning system on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So no AC gen set, no nothing, and we had because of the 144 volt DC. We used very little energy off of our 144 volt DC battery pack uh, to use this for cooling. In fact, um, when we were sailing, you were regenerating power through your through your uh, uh, electric drives with a prop feathering in the water. So we were really uh, using no power at all to run the air conditioning system. The amount of power we were using here, we were already getting back that and more from your uh, from your electric drive motors, which is just Amazing! Yeah. It, uh, it makes a 24/7 air conditioning uh, a reality when you're under sail. So, what else? What else would you like to tell the people in regards to this AC system? Is there much left, or is, have we covered everything? I think we pretty much covered everything. Um, you know, the it's, main the main things with doing an install is is uh, uh, finding the way from your main compressor unit to your remote evaporators and you need to find a hole about this big to run your two hoses and wire through. Well, so. we, cut, we cut out so much wire out of this boat because we used 144 volt instead of 12 volt. Yeah, much smaller so wires. So we had a lot, we, we used our same cavities for wiring to run this through. Once we pulled all the massive uh, uh, large double aught and triple aught wire out of the boat, yeah. uh, we had plenty of room to run all your hoses I on this no boat. I had no problem running hoses all over this boat. Yeah. Uh, had to open up a couple of holes where there was nothing running before, but other than that, it was a very simple, straightforward to, to find the space to do that. And if I was trying to run four or six inch flex duct to do the same job, it would have been impossible. Yeah, you well, you wouldn't have it. By the time it got over, over to this room, it would have been hot. It would have been blowing lukewarm air. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would have made a not even a good fan by that time. Yeah. And these things are nice. In fact, we uninstalled all the 12 volt fans in the boat, just mm -hmm. tore them out, threw them in the trash, because all I got to do is turn this to off, and I've got a fan without an air conditioner. Exactly. So, you know, I can keep that up or keep that down either way I want. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Jeff. I think there's, there's a lot of other uh, ancillary uh, benefits to this type of air conditioning. Mm -hmm. One of the things I saw, and I talked to the people yesterday about, is is the fact that if I've got somebody that's not feeling good, maybe they got too much sun exposure, one thing or another, we can put them in a midship cabin, we can turn this air conditioner on, isolate it from all the other air conditioner, and they can be comfortable for their whole recovery. While and, we're upstairs partying. And, and you insisted on the air conditioning your head section over on the other side, so if they're really, really sick, they can be sitting somewhere and getting cooled down. I may have the only well. air-conditioned head in the industry. Yes, <laughs> and, uh, and that, that may be the thing that that uh, that uh, you know gets a charter person back mm -hmm. into good shape if they're feeling a bit seasick or they've. Uh, yeah, as I say, got too much sun or had too many rum punches. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jeff Lemons. Thanks. And you're 